This isn't where anybody likes to be, is it? It's a cool looking PC, right? But why is it not plugged in? Why is it not playing games? Why am I not creating any content on it? Well, I get to create content about it today. So my AIO pump uh, has failed. It's, I don't know that it has ever accurately worked. So as you can see, this is an iBuyPower PC. So it came as a pre-built and I've got the Ryzen 5900X inside of it and I know it runs hot but I've never had it even idle under 75C, which is pretty hot and intense for even a CPU like that. I contacted iBuyPower, they had no problem sending me out a new one. Um, it's gonna be an upgrade to this. So I'm not even sure what's in here. I know it's a 240 AIO cooler. It's the stock one that comes on it. They sent me a deep cool to replace it. Uh, I've been running into issues where the PC will actually overheat and shut itself down. I had to go in the BIOS and throttle the CPU so it wouldn't get over 80 degrees, which really hindered my performance quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tear this PC down and bring you guys along for the ride and see how it goes. I've never done one of these, by the way, so we're gonna learn a few things. Obviously, the first thing I did was disconnect the computer, um, pulled all the cords out of the back, and I moved it to a different location so I could film this, but you know, it's not plugged in. So I've gotta take off the back plate or the Front plate here. So here's the back of the PC. This plate here is what they're saying is not gonna be able to work. These wires will actually come out of the way. Everything's just zip tied nice and uh, clean back here. So as you can see, my two fans right here are up on the top with the radiator. Down here on the bottom, which you can't see here, but right here are just two trays for uh, hard drives that aren't in there. The screen was on the bottom, should have been all the way to the top. First thing I'm gonna do is take the radiator out. or the pump is actually built into this radiator. So I got to trace this wire back and break it out of this wire tied jungle back here. It's gonna be a three pin and then it's gonna be a four pin. Interesting. So there's that. One thing that I am gonna be doing is taking pictures of uh, everything along the way just so I can so I mess something up or forget something I can figure out where uh, where everything's going. All right the second one is going to go right next to that and that is the fan header. That was also another four pin plug and that was actually a four pin female plug whereas the plug for the pump was only a three pin. So those are the two powers for the pump and the fans here. And the other one went to a separate fan header on the back, little control box. So that should be all the pieces that I have for the radiator and the fan assembly here. This thing has been making some kind of crazy noise. I thought it was a fan noise, like the fan was chomping or running into something, but um, that wasn't the case. It was actually the pump making the sound. All right, I'm gonna rebuild the new one for the same configuration as the old one. I wanted to put it in the top, but after looking at the heat sinks and the clearance for my motherboard, I'm just not gonna have enough room up front to put it here um, with that in my RAM. So I'm gonna go grab the new AIO cooler. I'm gonna hook the fans up in the same configuration as the ones that I pulled out while I've got everything sitting here and I'm looking at it so I can build them side by side. So what it's gonna be is I got the two fans in the radiator for the intake on the front. Then I've got two fans um, for the uh, exhaust on the top. And then I have another fan for exhaust on the rear. All right, so these are the new fans that they sent over to me. There's nothing fancy about them. They're just black. They do have little grooves and serrations in them. Um, whereas the old ones don't. Let me see if I can show you what the old ones look like. So the old ones are nice, flat, and smooth. I do have a little bit better cable wing on them. They've got some uh, some kind of braided cable that goes over top of the wiring, whereas the new ones don't. Yeah, so these are the new fans. The cables are quite a bit shorter. I'm gonna put it together and um, see if it works and if they reach. The only difference that I can see from the fans are the serrations in them, the length of the cable, the quality of the cable, and the new fans are 0.17 amps, whereas the old ones are 0.2. Here's the new setup. 
One important thing is to make sure that you keep the cover on there so you don't touch the thermal paste. You certainly don't want to do that. It's a nice mirrored finish. The pump on this one is actually inside the housing here. Got a nice little lens. Of course, it's uh, branded with the I Buy Power logo there. I don't know if I can take that on or off, but this cap certainly does come on and off pretty easily. So we also got two wires coming off the pump here. Um, this one here, this little plug, that's just the RGB header for the uh, lights. This one here is the uh, same as the three prong that I came that came off the other one. That's going to go onto the four prong right next to the RGB header on the motherboard. All right, so I'm going to install the screws and the hardware for the fans, and I'm going to attach the fans to the radiators. Uh, these long ones here that have the post, that have the threading at the end, um, those are going to be the ones that you attach your fan to your radiator with because you have to go through the two layers of the fan here. So your screw is going to go all the way through both of them and then it's going to stick out of the end and that's what's going to hold it into the radiator. Uh, pro tip too, when you're installing these screws, don't tighten the first one all the way down. Just leave it a little bit tight. That way you can uh, move the other ones around to line up the holes because no matter how good you think you did it, it's not going to be lined up as well as you think. Now these fans are going to have little cushions, little pads on either side. So when you attach it to the radiator and to the case, they're not going to vibrate and they're not going to make any sound. Um, it also gives you a little more leeway when tightening them down, but you don't need to go crazy uh, tightening these down. You just need to snug them up just so they hold them on. So I got the fans, the radiator installed. I got the wiring run for the fans. I got them plugged into the headers. Uh, the next step that I have, I believe, is to take the old AIO out. And I did end up unplugging the RGB from the original um, AIO cooler here. And there should just be four screws. So what I want to do is make sure that I support this while I'm taking these out so that it just doesn't fall on top of the graphics card or on a hard drive or anything like that because it does have thermal paste on it and I don't know if it's bad to get it on any of the other components but I don't want to find out. So you got four screws on these brackets that hold it in and then there's two on either side for tension so you don't have to take the tension screws out to remove it. You just have to take the screws on the sides. Apparently they're a lot longer than I was uh, originally thinking. There she is. There's the thermal paste. You don't want to get that on you or your clothes or anything like that. Um, and you can see it there all over the uh, chip. That's the 5900X. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. What you wanna do is get all that thermal paste off of your CPU as well. This is pretty pretty gnarly stuff on here, so I'm gonna go ahead, grab a little alcohol prep pad, and I'll be right back. And there she is in all her glory, the 5900X. All right, well, I think we finally got all the thermal paste and goop off. Um, this is the back plate for my motherboard and my CPU. I'm using the uh, 5900X, so this is the AM4 platform. So you'll use this, the back plate that comes with your motherboard, and you'll also have these screws here that have binding posts on either side. So there's a thick side, and then there's a thinner, more, more smaller machine side. Um, it's gonna be the uh, thicker piece that goes into the actual bracket itself. That's what's gonna hold it in here. So go ahead and screw those in. You're gonna have four on each side. I'm sorry, you're gonna have four total, four in each corner. So those are in nice and tight. So now you will have a little bit of play there, but that's all gonna get tightened down later when you actually tighten the bracket down to the CPU. It gives it a little bit of room to, to suck it in. But I need to put these brackets on to come with this. 
onto here, which you're gonna get them onto those binding posts. Um, they're countersunk right here. And those, that's the portion that's gonna be attached to this. So you wanna make sure that the screw head goes in that way and that's how it's gonna connect onto here. That way it's, it's flat. All right, so here is the top of the AIO cooler, which we need to add these little metal brackets still to. Let's find where that one went. Okay, well, I found the screw, fell into the graphics card, so I took the graphics card out, and we got a little more room to work now, so it might be easier for you to see. So, I'm gonna go ahead and finish putting on this bracket. Let's see if I can't drop a screw again, now that I don't have my workbench. This is gonna be quite the challenge. Remember, just snug them down. You don't need to go crazy, you don't need to go ham. All right. So the way that this is gonna get installed is just like this. See it comes across the ram. I'll be able to plug those in. We should be good to go. So at this point, you want to make sure that you have everything done. You want to make sure that there is no plastic or anything like that over top of your So you want to make sure that there's no plastic or anything like that over top of the cooler here or on top of the processor, which there is not. You're gonna line up your binding posts. So last thing, you're gonna take your other set of just the gnarled uh, screws here. And you're gonna put them on one at a time. And then they go on the top of the binding post. What you may have to end up doing is lifting your PC up a little bit and pushing it through the backside of the motherboard. So it makes contact. You can actually get on there and tighten them down. Now, you only want to snug them up, okay? You want to do like a cross pattern. That way it should spread out your thermal paste nice and evenly. And grab the last one is always going to be the trickiest one to get in there. Definitely the trickiest. Get in there, you. There it goes. Snug them all down, finger tight. Okay, now that that's all done, I'm going to go ahead and put that 
back down flat. I'll take my screwdriver and I'm just gonna turn them. And I'm not gonna go crazy ham on them. I'm just gonna make sure they're tight. And that should be it for that part. So, what I have left to do is to connect the three pin power header to the four pin fan header on the motherboard, which is this one right here. Just notice which way the, the keyway goes. I don't know if the camera's gonna focus on this. You can see it's kinda of got the slots there. On the four pin connector, there's a plastic piece where these slots will go in. And you wanna make sure that you line them up and then that's where that connects. So at least on mine, you're gonna take the three pins and they're gonna to go to the outside right three pins. You're gonna leave the very far left one unconnected, not connected. So the RGB is gonna go through to the back side of the case to the RGB controller. Now, luckily with my motherboard, so this is the connector for the RGB that came on this AIO cooler. My motherboard uses these kind of connectors for my RGB. So luckily my motherboard came with an adapter. So yours should too, you're, you should have a couple extra wires that came um, with your stuff. Reconnect this bad boy. And wow, um, looking at it, this pre-built, um, what? All right, well, um, since I'm here, I'll show you how to put the uh, graphics card in. The PCIe slot, line it up. You line it up with the AIO port. I'm sorry, with the uh, output port. Slide it in until that pin clicks on my motherboard and that's, that's it. This is easy. What I can do is uh, plug the graphics card back in at least. Everything plugged up. Um, only thing I have left to do is to run this RGB wire for the AIO cooler. Plug it in and try her out. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so she's all back together. Um, I guess there's nothing left to do other than power it up and see what happens. Best thing to do is to boot into the BIOS and check your temperatures there. Make sure nothing goes crazy. Like I said, I've got mine limited right now, but um, if it if it looks okay, uh, well, I'll set it back to auto. Right now I got mine set at 90. So it shuts everything, or it won't let the CPU go over 90 degrees. It'll start throttling it harder. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it boots up and what it looks like. Ooh, well, she turned on. All right, well, here we are in the BIOS and we've been started up for a couple minutes now and we're sitting at 48 Celsius. Sees the AO pump, sees all the fans. We're good to go. I don't think I've ever seen this cool a temperature. So much happy with it. I'll report back if anything else changes.